Nagbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan Today. My name is G. Tanji. We're coming to you from Los Angeles, California. We have representatives of US uh, CIS here with us. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephanie Kwan and of course Allison D. Kent. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Washington and Miami. <laughs> That's yeah. right. All right. So we want to inform our Kababayans out there mm -hmm. about the Filipino World War II veteran parole uh, program. Mm -hmm. And before we went to break, we were talking about who was eligible for this. Sure. Now, since this was a long time ago and some people that may have petitioned mm -hmm. their family members have passed on, mm -hmm. yeah. what happens to them? Allison? Well, uh, luckily, um, we actually have a process by which um, if somebody unfortunately has passed away, the World War II veteran or their surviving spouse, there is a way for if the veteran had filed one of these family petitions prior to passing away and that had been approved, we can actually reinstate that petition. It's like reapprove it um, so that somebody may still immigrate using that petition. And we can do that for humanitarian reasons. Um, there's actually, there's no fee uh, to, apply, to ask us to do that um, and uh, if we reinstate it then the family members can still apply to come um, here on parole and take advantage of, of this program okay you mentioned that there was no fee to reinstate a petition that's correct but there is a fee for a petition correct so in terms of applying for the Filipino World War II Veterans Pro Program, which we also call the FWVP program to make it a little bit shorter. Okay. Um, so there is a fee to apply for the FWVP program. Um, so in order to apply, um, you need to file a form I-131, which is a, um, ref a request for a travel document form. And you must file a form for every single family member who you're going to request parole for. So if you're going to request parole for your brother and his wife, then you file two forms, one for the brother and then one for his wife. And there is a fee associated with each application and um, the currently the fee is $360 however we always encourage people to look at the USCIS website for the most recent information about current fees um, and for those individuals where $360 may seem a little bit high mm -hmm. you can request a fee waiver um, to be waived from paying this fee um, in addition to filing the 131, the form I-131, you must also file a form I-134, which is an affidavit of support. And it just shows that who will be able to care and provide support, financial support, for these family members that you are trying to bring to the United States. Um, and so very simply, those are the two forms that must be filed for each family member that you are requesting parole for under the FWVP program. Okay, but you mentioned if you do get parole, mm -hmm you're going to be given status to work in the United States. Is this correct? That's right. correct. Mm -hmm. The moment actually that you come into the United States, that you enter here um, on parole, you're eligible to apply for an employment authorization document, which is a work permit. So there is a fee associated with that application, which also you can request um, for it to be waived if, if necessary. Um, and that, uh, so th anyone who comes here on parole is eligible uh, to apply for a work permit. Okay, now this is a question that we always want to ask. Do you have to have a lawyer help mm -hmm. you finish all the documents? Because there are a lot of documents to fill and we right. want to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. Right. <laughs> well, as a lawyer, I think I always have a preference for encouraging people to consult with legal counsel. It's not um, necessary, but uh, every circumstance is, is unique, and um, in many cases, it can help you to, to support, right. um, to figure out, to, to file those applications. Yeah. But we do have uh, a lot of information on our website, for example, about how to file that can walk you through that process. And the, form and the forms that we spoke about that need to be filed also have form instructions that give people information. But I. I I would never discourage anyone from seeking out um, their own attorney or, or legal representative, right. however. Okay, mm -hmm. so just in a nutshell, Stephanie, walk us through the process once again so that we're able to understand from start to finish what needs to get accomplished mm -hmm. to be able to be eligible for this. Okay, so as Allison mentioned, um, and earlier we talked about, so you need to file a Form I-131. 
um, for each family member that you would like to request parole for, and then a Form I-134, which is an affidavit of support, and that must be included for every single family member as well, one form for each of them. Um, on our website, we have some more information just to recap things we've talked about today regarding who's eligible to request parole, and then who, which family members they specifically, specifically can request parole for, um, and so to make it a little bit simpler to visually see um, what it looks like and who you can request parole for. Okay, mm -hmm. well, the next question, obviously, and you'll have to wait until we come back from break is how long will this process take? <laughs> yeah. So stick around. We'll let you know those details when we return on Cup of Buying today. Thanks.